Text wrapping can help you integrate your images flawlessly into your design. In this video, I'm going to show you the options that you have to make sure that your image looks great and your text flows nicely around it. Let's get started. I'm going to get started by coming to the top of the screen to File, then press New. I'm going to keep this new document fairly simple with a page preset set to A4, one page, and then I'll press OK. With my new document, I'm going to add text to it so that we can practice with text wrapping. To do this, I'll come and press on the Frame Text tool. Then I'll click and drag to create a text frame. And then I'll come to the top of the screen to text. And then I'll press insert filler text. And just so we can see how text wrapping works when working with columns, I'm going to come up to our context toolbar and then change the number of columns to two. To finish this off, I'm going to press on my move tool. And then I'm going to arrange this text a little bit better so it's centered in our document. If you want, you can also change the font size to make it something a little smaller or bigger, but I'll just leave mine at 12. Now that we have our text all set up, it's time to bring in our image. If you'd like to follow along with my text wrapping, you can get the image that I'm going to use in the video description. I'll press on the Place Image tool, and then you can see in the video description that you'll have the option to use this PNG or this JPEG. I've included both because PNGs are the final image format that you want to use for text wrapping, with this man being fully cut out of his background so that you can have the text flow around his body. But to dig into it a little bit deeper, I've also included this image of the man still in his background, and if you own Affinity Photo and can access the photo persona inside of Affinity Publisher, then you can follow along with this next part of me cutting this man out of his background. If you don't have Affinity Photo, that's okay, you can go ahead and select this image of the PNG, and then jump forward in the video to get more instruction on how text wrapping works. For now, I'm going to select this man with his background still intact, and then press Open. With my cursor loaded with this image, I'll go ahead and click and drag to insert him into the document. Then, to get rid of his background, I'll go into our photo persona up on the top left. Now that I'm inside of the photo persona, I can select this man and remove him from his background. It's super useful that you can go to the photo persona while you're still using Affinity Publisher so that you can quickly cut out an image and then use it for text dropping all within the same program. I'm going to select our selection brush tool and then I'll come over and begin to select the man. To decrease the brush size, I can use the bracket keys that are beneath the equal sign on the keyboard. Then, I can zoom in by pressing Command or Control Plus on my keyboard. And then I can get to some of those more fine details to really make sure that he's fully selected. I'll press my space bar to click and drag and move around the document. And now I'll go ahead and clean up some of these areas. If you ever select too much, like I did right here, you can change the mode in the context toolbar from add to subtract, or you can hold down alt or option on your keyboard and then paint to get rid of the extra selection. At this point, with our selection looking good, I'm going to come up to our context toolbar and then press refine. Pressing Refine 
usually does a pretty good job of cleaning up the edges of a selection, but I always like to make sure I paint around the hair if our subject has one to really make sure that our selection looks good. With our selection looking good, I'm going to press apply in this dialog box. Then I'll press command or control zero to zoom all the way out. Then to remove this man from his background, I'm going to come over here into our layers panel and then press here on our mask icon. Pressing the mask icon will mask the man from his background, leaving just the man and taking away his background. Now I can press Command or Control D to deselect. I'm going to come back up to the top left and return to our publisher persona. At this point in the video, we have our man fully cut out. So if you decided to use the PNG image, this is about where we can meet back up again in the video. To make sure that our man is ready for text wrapping, I'm going to come to his layer, right click, and then press rasterize and trim. If I don't press rasterize and trim, we might end up with excess border around the edges of him that we don't want. So I'll press this. And now you can see that his selection box is closely hugging his body, which is exactly what we want to see to make sure that he's ready for text wrapping. Now, with our man selected, I'm going to come up here to the top of the screen and press on this button to open our text wrap settings. If you ever want an object in your document to have text wrapping applied to it, make sure that it's selected before you begin adjusting these settings. That way, all of these settings will be applied to the object that you have selected. At the top of our text wrap settings, we have a few different options to change the style of our text wrapping. Right now, we have none applied to this man, which is why the words are going under him without being affected. You can click through these other options to see what they'll look like with your image. For this image, I'm going to press on tight, and then I'll show you a few of the other options we have in this dialog box. At the bottom of the box, we can adjust the distance between our object and the text. Right now, these distances work independently from each other, meaning if I adjust this left side, you can see that the spacing on his left side has become much larger than the spacing around the rest of his body. If I want all of my edges to be adjusted together so that all of their distances are the same, you can press on this icon right here to lock them together. Then we can increase the size of any of these and they'll all increase at the same time. The last option is to change how our text wraps. We can have the text wrap to all sides of our object, or if we press largest side, you can see that the text disappears from inside his arm area and between his legs. I'll click on both sides again so you can see how it was before. And now I'll press largest side to see how this makes the text a little easier to read. I'm going to turn on both sides again, so I can show you one more thing you can change with your text wrapping. I'm going to press close, so I can show you that up at the top of the screen, we can press this button to edit our wrap outline. When you're editing your wrap outline, you can move any of these nodes that are surrounding our man to adjust how the text is being affected. I'll press Command or Control Plus to zoom in, and then I can show you what this means. If I click and drag to highlight a few of these nodes, they'll all be selected, and then as I move these nodes, I can affect how these words appear.
by adjusting our text drop outline, we can determine exactly how many words appear between his arm to help with readability for our text. I can see over here, we might want to do the same. I'll go ahead and undo what I did, and then come back into our text wrap settings and put it back onto largest side because I think that that's best for readability in this case. Then I'll press close and zoom out by pressing Command or Control-0 on your keyboard. And finally, to finish off this video, we can select the Move tool and then adjust our man all over our document to see how the text is affected and how it's updated live, which is super useful when arranging our text and our images. If you liked learning how to easily text wrap, then you'll love our complete beginner's guide to Affinity Publisher, which I have linked in the video description. This course is full of video tutorials and practical examples like this one so that you can jumpstart your publisher skills. I can't wait to see you in the course.